Now, travel and tourism are among the most affected sectors of the pandemic with flights grounded, hotels closed, workers either losing their jobs or on furlough, and travel restrictions put in place in virtually all countries around the world. Now, the tourism industry in Nigeria is not left out. It has lost money and many jobs have been cut as employees are unable to pay wages. This trend raises fears that the industry could collapse by the time the coronavirus pandemic ends. So far, African airlines have lost nearly $5 billion in revenue following the spread of coronavirus on the continent due to the low passenger demand. And that's according to a report from the International Air Transport Association. Also, according to players in the market, already some 24,000 jobs have been cut, while employees have seized payments for those who will have jobs until business situations improve. And joining us to discuss tourism and drastic impact of the COVID-19 is the Director General of the Nigerian Tourism Development Corporation, Folorun Shaw Koka. Good to have you on the program. Pleasure to be here. Now, you heard some of the statistics, you know, that I just uh, introduced with that uh, last story. Um, what's your take with regards to that? Let's get your, your assessment. Uh, the, 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 the statistics that you have are um, even slightly old. Um, the, the figures are worse because, uh, as you know, we're in the second wave now. Tourism is the largest employer of labor in the world, strategically women and the youth. And if you look at the very young population that we have, especially in Nigeria, um, a lot of people have lost uh, their jobs. And if you look at the industry uh, uh, you call tourism, you will find in transportation, in hospitality, and in entertainment, where in the preceding years we have actually had growth of new jobs, the pandemic has come and shut that down and reversed the trend completely. So it's been quite a disaster. All right. Uh, now, realistically, uh, what are the main tourism potentials uh, that could contribute more to GDP and also encourage the much echoed deregulation of Nigeria's economy over time? Everywhere else in the world where tourism is uh, uh, a GDP contributor, you have seen the significance of it, especially the island states of the Southeast Pacific and the Caribbean. It's not rocket science as to how tourism can contribute to your GDP if you have the following things that we have. We've got great climate, um, we've got cultural and historical destinations, we've got from the desert to the delta to the tropical rainforest, and even moving away from those traditional uh, tourism assets, we've got music, we've got film, we've got fashion, we've got food. Even our seasonal politics is almost something of uh, a, a, tourism, a tourism asset now. So the potential is there, but there are certain things that just need to be done. And we need to do them because the rest of the okay. world has stopped. All right, let me just get you to hold your thoughts. Let's take a quick break. Uh, when we return, hopefully we'll be able to get more from you. We'll take a quick break right here on Newsday and we'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching Newsday right here on Arise News. Uh, just before the break, we're talking to uh, Dr. Sorry, Mr. Folorun Shaw Koka, uh, who is the Director General of Nigerian Tourism Development Corporation. And I did interrupt your uh, train of thoughts there for us to go on that break. So can you carry on from where you left off? Yes, I, I was just going to start off on, on where exactly we are. Um, the whole world has come to a stop. Whether you have a comparative advantage in infrastructure or in hotels, etc. Everybody's empty. The malls in Dubai were as empty as the palms in, in Lekki. And this was an opportunity for us to look at certain things and use the opportunity that the whole world has no comparative advantage against Nigeria to stop and address certain issues. And if we don't address those issues, traditionally what has stopped our tourism from being a real GDP earner will continue to so do. Our laws are archaic, not just in tourism, in so many spheres that I, I, I could care to mention. But if we don't change those laws, if we don't review those laws and bring those laws to 2020 to 2025, let me give you an example. In Dubai, before now, uh, couples couldn't, who were not married couldn't stay in a room. Alcohol couldn't be consumed. For tourism, they changed it. Now, women can drive in Saudi Arabia. For tourism, they've changed it. Now, 
you have countries that are traditional tourism destinations and countries that are not traditional tourism destinations changing laws weaponized to advance tourism. If we don't do that across the spectrum of, of both legislature, uh, regulation and taxation very quickly, to at least take advantage, even just come to 2020, take advantage of our assets, our tourism assets now, it will be difficult to grow. If we look at the human capital requirements of tourism, and especially the tourism satellite account, which is the uh, uh, aggregation of customs, police, etc., pooling data to be able to track people either for criminal or for COVID exposure, as we have uh, seen in recent times. If we don't develop the human capital that is specifically required for tourism, it is going to be difficult for us to grow tourism with uh, uh, mechanical engineers, etc., who are now working in restaurants and, and, and hotels. I'm sure you, mm. you understand what I'm uh, talking about there. I also believe that the future of tourism in Nigeria is pan-African. It's the growth of African countries sharing resources and comparative advantages together. If you can fly because you're good at flying, come and fly with us. If you can look after animals and we have open spaces, bring some animals here. The days of the tourist getting up, converting his Naira into uh, dollars to roam his phone to get a visa, etc., to go abroad. I'm not saying they're over, but what has happened has limited them. Uh, uh, it's more about you bringing what you want to sell, what you have to show to this country to sell. Um, the public relations and the advocacy that coronavirus uh, has shown us, we are used to sprints. This is a marathon. It's not going anywhere in a hurry. I saw the last speaker explaining some, some of the things that yeah. uh, were shocking. It's not going anywhere in a hurry. It's a new life. It's reimagined living. It's doing things that some people have done for a while, and we looked at them as strangers, like wearing a mask. We all have to wear a mask now. So it's copying very good habits. It's rock. I mean, your mask, wear your mask, no matter what it is you're doing, and enclosed spaces. As he said, it's, it's, it's worse than in, in open, open areas. I'm sorry, if, if I may come in, based on your assessment of those limitations that we have now, because like it or not, everything we do revolves around this pandemic. So we have to take that into consideration before uh, we do anything. So my question is, now that we have this, it's going to be with us for some time, um, the issue of alternatives, especially when it comes to tourism, uh, we've seen not too long ago, I've seen sometime last year, the Notting Hill uh, Carnival held, but virtually in that uh, aspect. And uh, there were mixed reactions towards deploying that uh, regarding something that uh, everybody traditionally would like it to be more physical, as it were. So in that perspective, is that the way to go for Nigeria? And uh, what are the prospects there? Um, we must take advantage of the disruptive technologies that are available. Whoever thought Zoom would kill conferences and meetings? And if, if you look along the uh, uh, pipeline of digital disruptive technologies that are available, you see the Uber, you see the Airbnb, we've got to go along those way. Tourism is torch, it's fail, it's very social. For as long as mass uh, aggregations that will spread coronavirus, let's call them super spreaders, are not allowed. All our traditional events are not uh, are going to take place, or else we're just going to keep on having spikes. So the alternative is to use technology. Technology will allow us to preserve our culture and heritage and traditions. Technology will allow us to spread it beyond the physical attendance because if uh, we captured the Durba in Kano um, a couple of years ago and more people will see the Durba from two years ago because of the 4K resolution, etc., that we used, and it will go further because it's on YouTube, it's on NTDC platforms, etc., than the amount of people who will attend it. So there is a prospect in terms of using technology to give greater access to people to see our culture, our tradition, our music, our film, et cetera. The danger is, could it kill 
the attendance of those cultural festivals that you're talking about. Because the uncertainty, the fear, the virus, um, they're all things that cannot be swept under the table. They're still there. So definitely technology has a part to play and, and, and a positive role in the development of the renew, rethought festivals of the future, Osho, Shubu, Judeo, um, Ba, etc. How will those hold in with COVID compliance, with social distancing, with the colorful outfits, with blue or black masks? So we, 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 this is really the time where we've got to rethink and reimagine and reapply the technologies that we have access to. Um, the last interview you had on was in Abuja. Uh, uh, that is possible by the technologies that are available today. Okay, let me just uh, take you up on technology because one of the examples that you've given is exactly that. And in terms of, you know, um, like the example that he gave, Notting Hill Carnival taking place virtually, do you think Nigeria is ready for virtual kinds of festivals like some of the ones that you mentioned earlier? Of course Nigeria is ready. 147 million internet connections, 95% telephone saturation. What Nigerians, what, what we have here is what we call a bite-sized economy. If you look at even products you buy in the supermarket, they're not making bigger cartons for economies of scale. They're bringing them into little sachets from the milk to the gin to etc. Sorry to cut so, in there, that, but what, maybe what I need is clarification. Let me clarify my question so that you know exactly where I'm no. going. Because in terms of what you're saying, you know, Nigeria is ready uh, to, you know, in terms technologically. But I'm talking about the people. Are they ready to actually watch some of these or actually participate in some of these events uh, taking place virtually? Because um, I don't know. What, what, what's yeah, your take so on I, I was using an analogy of bite-sized bite consumption to explain why Nigerians are ready. Nigerians are already in that bite-sized uh, uh, economy. So what you would show, the Notting Hill Carnival has to be put into a format that can be watched on a cell phone rather than a, a, a laptop or, or viewing, etc. During the lockdown, concerts were being held on Instagram and, and, and streamed live. So. Even the cinema, take a blockbuster movie, break it into six series, series, and let me be able to watch each episode for 300 naira on my smartphone. We've just got, we've, the technologies exist. We've just got to reimagine the application. So yes, not, those carnivals, those sort of things can, can take place, but they have to be virtual. To sustain them in the virtual uh, 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 economy of Nigeria, we have to look at stability, of bandwidth, we have to look at cost of internet access. In terms of accessibility, how many people are already online per hour population? I think that saturation is greater than every other, any other African country. So yes, we are ready. Yes, it's possible. Yes, the technologies are there. The encouragement for the entrepreneurs who will now take up these things, who will put a Jude Oba online and stream it? Who has the bandwidth? Where is the uh, uh, sponsorship or the support from private sector coming from? What is the policy from public sector to private sector in terms of, if you do this, will I give you a tax rebate because I don't have any funding for you? Those are the things that hurriedly need to be considered for us to package this in Interestingly, you know, when you, you talked about the, the issue of uh, funding there, I was just thinking, how will Nigeria make money from this uh, venture, if we have to deploy, uh, you know, uh, the the sphere of uh, technology for some time to come over this issue. Yes, you, it's you, you highlighted. It's you. It's you. <laughs> you highlighted it's the you potential. Is here. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay. So, hopefully, on a post-COVID uh, uh, pandemic era, uh, what steps should government take in the interest of recovery and encourage the fortunes of uh, Nigeria's uh, tourism sector? You think? Um, the first thing I already mentioned is we've got to look at our laws. There's uh, it's power without control. Uh, uh, if you don't have the right legislative framework, tax framework, uh, regulatory framework for the entire ecosystem, it's just not tourism. It's everything. 
if there isn't a bipartisan approach by legislature to review the laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, hurriedly to take into consideration what we've just been through and what we have to deal with in the future, we'll have a problem, that's one. Two, the human capital requirements in terms of training for COVID compliance, as well as the new technologies that must be brought in to bear for us to be able to take the quantum leap in, 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 in terms of progress, it, it, it's, again, government policy has to influence that. Um, infrastructure, there's a lot of moribund infrastructure in Nigeria, I'm sorry to say. Um, there's no need for any building right now to be empty and owned by government. This is the time to help people, uh, 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 help artists to, 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 to display their art, help restaurateurs, help pretty much everybody. We need to deploy every asset that we have for the use of people in both the public and the private sector for development, accelerated development. Um, in your sphere, um, development journalism, not everything needs to be a sensation. I mean, I'm not speaking to you. <laughs> so, um, you know what I mean. Yeah. Development journalism, we, we, we need to look at what we put online. We need to look at how people are echoing the negative versus the positive about Nigeria. Nigeria is a great country. Nigerians are great people, but Nigerians just don't tell the positive story about Nigeria. The image of Nigeria has to change, and the noise we make about Nigeria, um, starting with the, 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 the coverage of events and, and, and the journalism that drives you know, people wanting to even come to Nigeria. Um, uh, we've got to look at that. Um, we've got to standardize things. Um, you don't want to come into a hotel in Nigeria with a, a, a five-star rating and, uh, for a hotel, and, and you get in there, and there's a bucket and a cup in the bathroom. It's mm. so a standardization. Uh, uh, we've got to look at this is not the time for competition. This is the time for collaboration. This is the time for mergers and acquisitions. This is the time for us to come together to try and rebuild it. Um, I know we're very competitive people, and that's probably a difficult thing for us to accept to do, but it's, it's the reality that we have to face. Yeah. Uh, today, we're going to look at places like the airport. Should people should be checking in inside the airport or checking in in a car park? So that, the, you know, you, you, you're not constantly disinfecting, constantly checking temperature uh, and maintaining it. Once you leave your luggage, you board the aircraft. Okay, yes, you've got to think about social distancing outside the aircraft and you get into the aircraft and we're all... De definitely this. a whole lot has to change here. Yeah. Follow Michelle Kukup, Director General, Nigeria Tourism Development Corporation. I'd like you to thank you for your perspective on this issue. It's good to have you.